call to order the public hearing for the purpose of considering a proposed approval of the Piatone Business Development District Number One Plan and designation of the proposed business district redevelopment area. Please call the roll. Marinka here. Jones here. Marsh here. Parker here. Sam here. Oh, here. And uh, acknowledgement of the publication of the public hearing notice. Again, published as <laughs> required by the statute. And with that, I will turn it back over to Mr. Klein. Thank you, uh, Trustee Marsh. This now looks a little similar to the one we gave you before. This is a summary of the business development district number one proposal. It has a boundary map inside and on the very back is uh, some information that I'd like to touch on with you as well with regard to how you use it. Okay. So let's look at the map initially here which is on page three. This is a much larger, more expansive area than we were looking at for the TIF district. But you'll note that the uh, within the, the dark, bold line is the business district. It includes all of the proposed TIF district number two. Uh, it includes most all of the uh, downtown TIF district area. It includes all of the commercial area of the downtown. There are two kind of gray shaded areas. One of them is north of uh, Wilmington Road there, kind of across from McDonald's. The little triangle is not annexed. It's not in the village, so that cannot be included in the business district. And then uh, over here next to the downtown and the uh, railroad, you have another shaded area which is uh, pretty much all residential neighborhood, okay, which at this time hasn't been included in the business district. So the objective here was to try to include all of the commercial retail area from Interstate 57 uh, across Wilmington Piatone Road and then northward along Harlem Avenue and um, Governor's, South Governor's Highway to include all of your, your commercial corridors within the proposed business district. We did include the um, Pearl um, car dealership because we learned uh, subsequent to the first map you might have seen, we understand that it was annexed. And uh, then there's that uh, parcel there along Tucker Road that is also annexed. But the property around Pearl is not uh, in the village. So it's not included at this time. So uh, business development district is very different than a TIF district. Business development district is based upon sales tax, whereas the tax increment financing districts are uh, reliant upon property tax. With a business development district, the village will have the authority to, as a, as a non-home rule community, you'll be able to increase your municipal sales tax within this boundary Okay, within this bounded area by up to 1%. You can impose this tax in quarter percent increments, 0.25 at a time, or you could do the full 1% all at once, which unless we're told differently, that's what we've based the plan on so far is the full 1% uh, increase um, for a variety of reasons, but not the least of which would be to also further help support the village's recovery of its costs relating to the travel plaza. Okay, because the sales tax that is likely to be generated by the, um, and the hotel tax that will be generated by the project out there will help reimburse your land and your road costs as well as the TIF funds. Then the business development district money that is generated from this additional 1% tax can be used anywhere within this um, bounded area. 
and it can be used for these costs that are outlined on the back of the handout that we gave you. These costs are almost identical to the types of TIF eligible expenses that TIF money can be used for except for one item. And that item, if you look down to the third to the last, there it says construction of new buildings. So there may be some cases, some instances where business development district funds, and they should have stayed, the ones that left would have appreciated this because this is something that can more immediately help the downtown. Okay, the business district funds can help the downtown because we can use this money not only to help incentivize new construction, but you can use this money also to help uh, provide assistance to these older buildings for facades, for roof repair, uh, interior repair, whatever it may be. Uh, and we have, uh, just in the last couple of years, we've helped establish in a couple of towns some very successful facade programs that is leveraging this business development district money into substantially higher investments in the older downtowns than would have ever been considered. So the business development district in tandem then with the TIF district is what has been identified as necessary or needed in order to attract Mr. Patel's project to the area out by the interstate. This area then extended over to the downtown. If there are business district funds that are generated out by the interstate, you'll be able to use them in the downtown also by virtue of this contiguous boundary that you see here. Okay. Now the findings that the village makes to establish the business district are um, similar, very similar to what we look for for characteristics on TIF districts except that in business district number two we didn't have any buildings there were no improved properties so all of that was based on characteristics of the land as it related to drainage and flooding problems within the business district area we're looking for indications of the condition of the not only the infrastructure the public infrastructure but the the extent to which some deterioration may be evident on the buildings themselves that are located within the business district. And um, we noted that among the things that qualify the area to be a business district, there was a predominance of deterioration on over 91% of the structures that were observed within the BDD area. Not every structure exhibited those characteristics, but um, over 90, over 91 percent of them did. Um, the slow growth again in your assessed valuation is a major contributor to the qualification of the area for the business district. Um, deteriorated or inadequate or non-existent streets, so to the extent we have any areas where the streets are obviously needing some repair or the sidewalks are lacking or they're in disrepair, alleys are not in good shape, uh, or there may be some, there's 60 vacant properties within that area too where there are no streets that still would need to be um, constructed. Those things all help contribute uh, to a qualifying as a business district. And so the, the general idea is that within a business district area, we want to include the type of properties that will have some direct benefit by being in the business district. If not because they come to the village and they ask for help directly, it may be because there's a new sidewalk that helps increase pedestrian traffic to increase their business volume or a better street or more traffic is generated as a result of the improvements that are made within the business district. There may be some benefit to them, but it might not be a, a check that you write to them for some improvement they make on their own property. So there's 331 parcels total uh, within the business district area. And we have, as we did in the TIF plan, you also have public and private projects and estimated costs that are included in the business district plan. The business district plan includes all of the TIF 2 
project costs, the public project costs that we estimated for that because business district money would equally apply. It also includes most all of the downtown TIF public project costs that are included in the downtown TIF. And then we've also included some other costs for areas that are not in either TIF district uh, in the business district plan. So there is a, an abundance of uses for the funds if you can generate them. Okay. Now the village can, as I mentioned earlier, you can impose up to 1% for what's called a retailer's occupation tax, which is the general sales tax that we're all familiar with on most goods. The thing that is exempt, the, the biggest thing that's exempt from business district tax is that car sales, for example, or any type of vehicle or any sale that requires uh, an item to be titled by the state of Illinois. Um, is not subject to the business development district tax. Okay, so if you purchase a vehicle, there's no BDD tax on it. There is then also the BDD service occupation tax, which we're not taxing services like lawyers or doctors and that type of thing, but what we're taxing would be if you took your car to have the oil changed, then you're going to pay tax on the oil filter. Okay, you're going to pay tax on the parts. Um, and that would be a source of some BDD funds that would be coming into your fund. The retailer's occupation tax and the service occupation tax are both collected by the Department of Revenue as part of the regular state sales tax that's collected every month. Department of Revenue then will allocate that out and send it to you in a separate check or note that it is BDD money that you receive each month. So they're collecting it and they're sending it back to you, minus a small administrative fee, of course. The hotel operator's tax is imposed and collected by the village. So am I correct? You already have in the past imposed yes. a hotel tax. So you're familiar with that process. This will just be an addition. We don't have a hotel yet. You don't have a hotel, but you have the tax. Yeah. So, but you'll you will be responsible for collecting that tax and then uh, administering that all yourself without revenues involved. So, can I a quick question on the the uh, state department of revenue when you when you go to fill out your monthly tax? Yes. You get a form that says you have to pay this percentage. So, how do they know that that parcel? has to pay the extra percentage. You know, so when we when we file the plan, the plan has to be to the Department of Revenue on or before October 1st, so that the tax that you impose will take effect January 1. But prior to October 1st, we want to submit this plan, and in the plan, ultimately, we'll have a street address for each of these parcels. And they, the Department of Revenue's world revolves around street addresses. Okay. For TIF, everything is about PIN numbers, <coughs> property identification numbers that the county assigns. But for Department of Revenue, they'll look at the street address, and if there is a business registered and is generating sales tax through the state rate already, they will then be required, they'll be notified by the Department of Revenue that they have to pay the business district tax. So is there a separate line item There'll be a on place that? on their ST1 on forms that they have to report. Questions, comments? Or? Yeah. Questions from the public? So we have, if we implement the retail tax, it goes to all businesses. We can't just put it out by the truck stop. The tax applies to the area the whole that area. you define. Okay. Right. So it'll impact current businesses and new businesses. It will. Is there, is there any benefit for the developer? Like the Can you come developer? up to the... Is there any benefit for the developer to, to sell some taxes and materials and things like that? For the business district? Mm -hmm. Potentially, but the in your particular case, the village is uh, going to be pretty focused initially, at least, on recovering its costs for the land and for the whatever you contribute toward the road construction. Beyond that, if you have development costs, 
there like could potentially be like tax on the Oh no no, you're thinking of uh, yeah. you're thinking of an enterprise zone, which is not available here. Okay. The enterprise zones offer the exemption on the sales tax for materials. Um, it would be, but that's not part of the business. I, I, have, I am going to ask Monique if they have any additional capacity and they would let me maybe extend it. Extend it, but I, you know, it, that's I not don't something know. we can create. Yeah, because yeah, it's, it's not really laws. You know, it's just you know, but yeah. we're going to buy the material. Right. So yeah. I mean, you know, it would be a huge. Uh, it would make a no, huge impact on your me, no? on your project mm -hmm. and, and others' projects that we could, but we we could not create one for ourselves here. It just we wouldn't qualify. The village can't unilaterally do that. All the municipalities that participate within an enterprise zone have to agree to the change in the enterprise zone boundary. Thank you. Any other public comment or questions from the board? Okay. So the one percent increase would just affect businesses. It would affect the homes if there was anybody's houses. It's in only this. it's only sales tax. So if you make a sale for which there is a uh, municipal sales tax. So if you're working from your home and you had a business out of your home with that? If you're retailing some product out of your home, you potentially could be... Uh, let me put it this way. If you're currently, right now, you fill out a form and you report sales to the Department of Revenue for the 1% share of the six and a quarter that the state imposes now, you're going to be uh, going to be uh, going to be paying the business district tax okay. also on most all products except for those few exemptions that I mentioned like the title vehicles and that type of thing. <laughs> well, doesn't it exempt and everything there also like food and yeah. uh, that doesn't we're, we don't tax that. So actually, right? food uh, unless it is for immediate consumption if it's, if it's right. fast food or if it's prepared food the BDD tax will apply. Right. right. Any other questions? So the money raised from this is going to be helping develop the downtown area or the business district, It can. Correct? Most certainly can, So yes. if I'm doing a remodel at the library, would I be able to apply for funding? Or is it, you know, at that time in the future? Or is it just the old part of town that you're thinking of? Because I'm in the, the business district. Yeah. So the, uh, and Herb can help me out here if, if you want to, but the, the Business Development District Act uh, provides some authority to the village to work with developers and work with others that may have projects within the business district area, which others could be the library. It doesn't as explicitly talk about other taxing bodies like the TIF Act does. TIF Act specifically refers to reimbursements to other taxing districts, but because other taxing bodies are not affected by the business development district, um, other than yourself, none of them are here, right? But the village has the authority to be able to use business district funds within the business district area if it's in furtherance of the objectives of the plan. So. You don't pay any sales tax, for example, obviously. You're not going to generate it, but you could be a beneficiary. But if the city wanted to help, you know, beautify the area around the library, maybe a new sidewalk, that type of thing, they could use business district funds for that if they chose to. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing and adjourn the public hearing. Motion. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by <coughs> Trustee Parker, second by Trustee Ham. Parker? Yes. Ham? Yes. Biden? Yes. Marathka? Yes. Jones? Yes. Clark? Yes. And we will convene our regular meeting at 7 p.m.